Good evening, everyone. Sorry we're a little bit late. We were having some technical difficulties, but I think we're on track. My name is Mark DiPietro. I'm the Vice President for Marketing and Communications at Landmark College. And we're really happy you could join our webcast tonight. It's uh, going to be all about our great students and faculty in our communication and entrepreneurial leadership uh, program at Landmark College. Um, and this is also the official kickoff to our virtual open house, which is happening tomorrow starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, this is a little sneak preview you can get of some of our academic uh, programs that are happening. So um, you can please send us your questions in the Q&A section and uh, we'll be answering questions after everyone has a chance to talk. You're going to hear from a couple of our faculty members and um, a couple of our students who will talk about the great work they're doing in the program. So with that, I am going to turn things over to Professor Matt Gander. Hi, folks. Um, it's nice to see you all tonight. Um, this degree is the most exciting thing I've been doing at Landmark over the last 30 years since I've been there because it's so uh, production oriented and so um, kind of focused within real world activities. Um, leadership is something that I teach and I also teach communications. Um, and we've been developing a media dimension to the degree that um, my colleague, Jerry Kepish and uh, one of his students will talk about in a bit. I, I guess the main thing I would say about the COML degree is that it really focuses on student strengths and what students bring to the college while also helping them work, you know, obviously on areas that they need to improve in. Um, the degree encompasses communications, leadership, um, the kinds of skills that are involved with facilitation, group participation, uh, how to make project plans, how to create proposals, how to do things that actually get you somewhere um, in, in the working world. And it's a very much um, a sort of work-oriented degree. Um, my, my passion, I'm a journalist um, by, by training, um, and I one of my passions has really been um, how we've developed a kind of media and journalism degree over the years. And I'd sort of like to turn things over to Jury to talk a little bit about what he's been doing in terms of uh, multimedia and some of the really new energy that he's been he's brought into the program and um, some of the great work his students are doing. Um, so, Jerry, if, if I can kick it over to you, are you you all set? All right, hey, Mac, um, thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm reporting from live from the brand new television studio that we have here on campus. And as Mac mentioned, um, our common degree is really production focused and engaging with hands-on activities, and what other better way to do that than to record television um, shows. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick little tour of our brand new television studio. It's been about a year in the making, um, and we're just uh, getting started producing some, some uh, student-created uh, content to, to, that's going to be um, aired locally on the airways for community television station. So really exciting times. And, and in the degree and especially uh, with uh, multimedia production. Um, I'm also going to introduce you to a student of mine. His name is Gabriel Raphael, who has been actually also assisting me with the setup of the team studio. Um, so I'm just going to give you, swivel the camera around, give you a look at our television studio here. You can see that's the set. And this is a uh, um, student of mine, Gabriel Raphael, who um, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Gabriel. I, uh, I'm in the Kamal uh, bachelor degree. I'm really excited to have all this equipment and to really, really get to producing something that's the end of And as you can see here, that's Gabe on the monitor. We have a blue screen. Um, wave to the camera, Gabe. <laughs> um, I'm also going to show you quickly. We have a control room. If you want to come over, Gabe, we'll head over to the control room. Uh, it looks kind of like the Starship Enterprise in here. As you can see, a lot of different buttons. Um, but this is where you're able to switch between cameras, camera one, camera two, camera three, and that would all be recorded live. So uh, really powerful tools that we have here. And, um, and I really um, 
obviously I'm very excited about the program and all it has to offer. So I'll pass it along now to back to back to you, Mac. Is that right? <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Um, the, the studio is going to be a big part of um, what we're doing moving forward in terms of um, communications. And one of the really exciting elements of the program is our, our student publication voices, which we're working toward being a multimedia publication. Um, I, I'll talk a little bit. I'm going to introduce um, my, my colleague and student, Luke Sillers, in just a moment. Um, but to do that, I have to talk about the courses that I've taught that he was in, uh, beginning with a course in leadership and facilitation where he first conceptualized a project that's now coming to fruition, um, then an, a leadership practicum where he and a large group of students helped to design um, a new phase of our media program in terms of the independent student publication voices. Um, and then also um, Luke wound up working um, with the uh, uh, newspaper that I work for, the independent nonprofit newspaper I volunteer my time at in Brattleboro, um, and did like a lot of internships and stuff. And he's actually now on the board of uh, the governing board of that publication um, and just finishing up his capstone project, um, working with me uh, this semester. Um, and Luke, I wonder, would you like to just describe a little bit about your sort of trajectory through the? Um, through the degree, the degree um, and kind of how it's worked for you. Sure, it's been a been a very exciting uh, process. Just just going through it, and the, the degree is brand new and it's changed several times just since I've been back at Landmark. Um, most the most moving part of uh, my involvement has been with the Voices magazine, as Mac mentioned. Um, it's a it's a magazine that's 100% produced by students, you know, for the students, and um, it's very common. I think pretty much everybody in the first common cohort has sort of had a, had a a part to do uh, to play in, in in the Voices magazine, which is really special, and uh, it just showcases all the best work from all different areas of campus, you know, art and photography, poetry. So that for me is one of the most moving aspects of uh, my time in Kamal. I wonder, Luke, if you could say a little bit about what you've learned about leadership. <laughs> well, you know, leadership is everywhere. Um, being part of the magazine, um, you lead the other students, you know, you lead other students to produce something special. And it seems like a simple process, just putting together a book of creative writing or what have you, but there's a lot of moving parts in it. And to kind of guide all those moving parts is something that's very moving. Um, and it's, it's something really special to be, to be part of. Um, and it's sort of carried over to my experience with Vermont Independent Media as well, where I, I've had an internship there, um, working with their newspaper and operations. And um, the experience in general has helped me quite a bit. Um, in where I want to go professionally, which is just, you know, business management. Um, and so, you know, as you mentioned before, Mac, there's so much about this degree that is experiential and work uh, oriented and ex just ex gaining ex ex professional experience while learning at the same time, you know, it's a two for one almost. So that's really part of what makes Kamo so special. Can I throw a question at you, Luke, uh, too? I know, so the second part of the degree name is entrepreneurial leadership. And I know that uh, from talking with you that you're also an entrepreneur. And uh, there, there's a piece of that that we'll talk about a little bit later, but can you talk about your entrepreneurship? Absolutely, That's that's been a huge part of uh, my experience here. Of course, uh, the majority of it happened before COVID, so it almost seems like a distant memory, but very important nonetheless. Um, they have something called LEAP, the Landmark Entrepreneurial Advancement Program. Um, and as a small business owner, I am a commercial bee farmer and um, they have a, 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 an entrepreneurship program that has, um, it's, it's, well, like I said, it's called LEAP. It's an entrepreneurship program through Comel and they have a pitch every year where small business owners, entrepreneurs can um, basically do a mini shark tank at Landmark and uh, to get a grant. Um, and so Landmark will support entrepreneurs in that way, giving them grants to further their uh, businesses or their 
business interests and get themselves off the ground. So you can even launch a business while doing your degree at Landmark simultaneously. And that's really pretty unique and special. And it's been really moving for me. And um, yeah, thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> And I think I know um, we were hoping that Jeff Burgess, who's chair of the department, um, would be able to join us. He's having some technical difficulties, but I know Jeff can talk quite a bit about the LEAP program and the grants. Um, Mac, I don't know if you can add anything to that, but I know they're all landmark student projects that are funded. Is that correct? Well, yeah. And and I mean, it's it's a really the the entrepreneurial side of the degree, which our professor Tamara Sten has brought in has been amazing in terms of how it's helped students who have ideas about business, you know, move forward um, with seed money and, and, and moving forward. Um, and, and it's, you know, our internship program in general, I think is a really important dimension of Landmark as a whole, but it's really emphasized in the communication and entrepreneurial leadership degree. And I have to say that, um, you know, having worked at Landmark for 33 years now or 32, um, one of the things that I really love about this new degree is that it's so focused on being successful in careers, you know, and, and I've seen students, you know, kind of start at the sophomore level or even freshman level, kind of move up and take on different levels of challenge. Um, and our course sequence is very much geared to the idea of developing those skills um, and also giving students options that are based on what they're good at, you know, which I think is one of the things that really gets missed in LD education in general is that, you know, historically within the context of, you know, whatever, you know, you want to call it LD, ADHD, ASD, et cetera, we focused on um, what was weak, how could we make you fit into, we're going to turn you into a, a round peg to fit into a round hole instead of sort of saying, well, let's go find that square peg that you fit into. And I think I, that's one of the things I love about working in this program is the sense of students moving forward. I, I have nine students in the capstone for the program right now, and they're all graduating. Lucas won with his B project, but they're doing things that are just amazing. I mean, one student, well, Gabe, you can talk about this actually, is shooting a, a film, you know, and, and, and another student is making a business plan for renovating rundown houses in Wyndham County in order to turn them into moderate income rental housing for students. And they're making business plans and doing stuff that's very real world. And I'm an academic, I mean, I'm a professor and I've got three degrees, but I really love the work oriented element of the degree and the way it combines research and study with thinking about, well, what do I do with this? Um, so anyway, I don't mean to go on and on, but that, that, I, it's a great degree, I love it. That's very useful, and I and I want to come back to Gabe because um, he's an expert videographer, as we all know, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. But uh, Mac, I'm glad you mentioned LD education. So we're you know we're assuming most of the people watching us are probably pretty well aware of Landmark College's mission and, and what we do. But um, you obviously have been uh, been at the college almost since it opened, so maybe you could just give a little rundown on the on the background about the college and and um, how we work with students with LD. Well, sure. I mean, it's we're just really deeply student-centered to begin with, and it's a very intensive program because when we started, we said, we're not going to bypass students. We're not gonna let people pass through. We're gonna hold them to their best work, um, but we're gonna support them in getting there. And it's evolved a lot um, over the years, but we've always kept that idea that our that the students well, there's a phrase in the field, um, students don't have learning disabilities, schools have teaching disabilities. And I think a lot of what Landmark is about is like not having teaching disabilities and being good about that. Um, I think that students find a home here also, and I think that's important, you know, that, that, that when you get to Landmark College, you're not different anymore. You know, everybody's like you. You know, I mean, I have ADD, you know, I've dealt with it all my life. Um, it helps me teach students with ADHD and, and so on. And I think that that culture of welcoming, along with just being really soundly based in research, you know, understanding what these labels all mean um, and having a really thoughtful approach to teaching, you know, and, and program structure and so on makes a huge difference. Um, people like 
Gabe and Luke, you know, should have just been able to sail through school, but they weren't for some reason. So they got here and then they are able to achieve really great things. Um, and I think that that, that element of us um, as a college is really meaningful to me. And it, it, it's, it works, it really works. That's great, thank you, Mac. Um, Gabe, if uh, I could put you on the spot to talk a little bit about, so full disclosure, uh, Gabe uh, was my intern for a couple of semesters and I found Gabe because <clears throat> He had an interest in um, computer science, I believe was his original degree um, major. Right. And he, uh, I, was, I was hoping to find someone to help with some website coding. But in the course of conversation, I found out that Gabe was a very good videographer and has a, has a lot of interest in making films. So he became my intern uh, in the marketing and communications department and started making uh, videos for us. So Gabe, uh, this degree program sounds like it was a really natural fit for your interests. And could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, and at first I, I tried to look at the art degree, but with all my, my, my general education background, I would have had to start at the bottom. And it seemed that the Connell degree was, was sort of the next best fit. And it, it, I, I think I really thrived in it. I, I, I had a really good experience in the internship sort of learning to make documentary style films, which, which sort of took the form of uh, virtual tours around campus. Um, I, I think I've sort of, I've been enabled to take what I've learned in, in, um, in video and, and expand on that. And uh, even, you know, I've taken uh, juries, um, what, what was that class that we took? Uh, crisis, communication, crisis Communication Media, um, which is, it, you know, it's really applicable right now, but, uh, and especially now that we have a, a, a TV studio and we're, we're incorporating uh, TV production classes in the major, that's really exciting. Um, sorry, what, what, what was the original question? <laughs> Uh, I was I was just wondering how your interest in um, well I know you made a you made a film a year or two ago about the ADHD experience right it was sort of a yeah. um, an experiential film about what yeah. what it's like to have a brain that's that's ADHD and mm -hmm. um, that you found a way to to make that visual in a way through you know through the visual arts and it seemed like at the time you were maybe thinking you were a little more interested in a technical area like computer science, and then you found the arts, um, the visual arts were a little more well-suited. That was around the time this degree was being rolled out, I think. So um, I, I just wondered if you found that, you know, that was a really natural progression for you to to declare this degree instead. Yeah, I, I think it everything sort of really fell into place uh, in it. And you know, there might might be a, a couple classes that I, I wasn't necessarily as interested in, but I, I think overall it, it it's helped me go in a really good direction um, that I'm really enjoying. Luke, can I ask you a similar question? How did you, um, what was your experience at Landmark, maybe before Landmark, and how did you find that you were interested in this degree? Well, yeah, it's actually, for me, I actually graduated from Landmark in 2015 with my AA degree. And, and at the time, they didn't have the, uh, any. I think they only had liberal arts. And so I went out and got a job with a newspaper. And years later, um, I got tipped off that Landmark had new degrees. And I, so I came back and, and Comel was the best fit for me because, you know, where I wanted to go professionally, where I had already been going professionally, I've worked in the newspaper industry pretty much my entire professional life. And I already ran a, a small business. So communication and entrepreneurial leadership just this is a perfect fit. And um, it has been ever since, you know, um, as Gabe said, you know, there's, you know, there's always, you know, some classes that maybe don't aren't, aren't the perfect, you know, in your wheelhouse, but, you know, in general, um, this degree covers kind of, it's kind of redefining, you know, my weaknesses throughout through the context of my strengths almost, you know, in, in those cases. And 
the classes that I've been taking um, have been almost like, um, I don't know if fun is the right word because work is work, but um, it's been very fulfilling. All the work that I've done has been very fulfilling and it's the with tangible results, um, work experience almost at the same time, pretty much. Um, and for the first time, I feel like I'm in a program that is really preparing me for a specific career path that, you know, gen eds don't necessarily offer. Thanks, Luke. Um, I know we talked a little bit about the new TV studio. Um, I wonder if uh, someone, maybe Mac or maybe even Jerry, could talk a little bit about WLNC, the radio station, which has been around uh, for quite some time. Well, I can drop into that because I was vice president of academic affairs when it was founded and it was Jeff's idea. So, I mean, I'm sorry, Jeff's not on the call, but, you know, that's been a really great um, ongoing source of, um, in part, just co-curricular activity for students. There are like a lot of students that have, you know, their own shows, you know, and, and um, we're taking it to the next level. And Eric Matty, who's the professor that manages that department, I mean, you know, or manages the radio station, um, has really been working on, um, <clears throat> you know, especially given how much we rely on like podcast, I mean, a podcasting, radio, audio has become a bigger thing. <clears throat> I think for a lot of students it's become really, um, it's an area of focus. Um, Right now, I'm working with like three or four students who are engaged with the radio station as part of a larger picture of communications and being able to promote their work. Um, but, and it is, it's a lot, you can, you can stream WLMC any place you want to, because it's on the internet. And, and, and um, um, part of what we're doing right now, and it's gonna be exciting over the next two years, is putting together the work that Eric's done with the radio station, what Jury's doing with um, digital storytelling and the, and the TV station and the work that I've done. I'm a print journalist, I'm really old school, um, but putting those things together um, to make something that for students that are interested in telling stories in different ways, um, you know, have um, access to that. And and um, and that's, that's very exciting to me, you know, uh, in terms of, um, the whole idea of neurodiversity and how people have different strengths, you know, so that somebody who's good at video at Landmark has a chance, or somebody who's good visually has a chance to really use those skills. You know, um, someone who's a great writer has a chance to use those skills. Um, you know, students that are really, you know, capable of managing business affairs, like marketing or advertising, you know, there's a place for them in this degree, you know, um, and students that want to run a business. Um, I'm working with a student right now on her capstone who makes this really interesting kind of uh, variation on teddy bears, and she's trying to create a major business. And I just put her in touch with um, the, the, a friend who uh, uh, did the marketing for the Chamber of Commerce in Brattleboro, and they're chatting about how to, how to market, how do you market these, te you know, how do you think about ramping the business up? Um, so, that was a little wandering. That's my ADD at this hour of the night. But, but I think that that those connections, like students finding their own connections through things, are really important. You know, and 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 starting with the idea of strengths. You know, because so much of the LD world is about what you're not good at, as opposed to what you are good at. And that's a really, I think that's what Landmark is about. It's like, what are you good at? Let's make that strong. You know, and this degree really does that. Yeah. That's a great description, and I, and I like you. As you know, I'm I'm a print. I was a print journalist, and um, I remember you t describing this degree to me in that way, and that really opened my eyes. Like you know, th there's there's a field within this degree and within this th these other fields that are good for people who you know are neurodiverse and have different strengths because of their neurodiversity. Um, we do have a question: How many students are enrolled in the Kamal degree? I can make a guess at that. Jeff would probably know. The degree is um, only two years old at this point. We're graduating. Um, there are nine students in their senior year, and there are another 
I would say 15 or 20 coming behind them. I mean, I'd say, and I think it's going to grow in that sense, but it's very intimate. There are a lot of, um, you get a lot of contact with teachers who know each other, you know, so you, over time you work with different, you know, so it's, 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 um, it will grow, but right now it's pretty intimate. Like, um, you know, so Jeff can hear us, even though we can't hear him. So he, he typed in that there are 29 students and nine grads. Does that sound right? Yeah. I, I don't, I, it has to be right because Jeff said it. So I know he knows. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so I was going to ask Jerry to talk a little bit about, I know um, you've sort of brought a, I think a multimedia um approach into the into the degree so maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, some of what what you do in your class jury yeah so uh, along the lines of what uh, matt had mentioned about bringing a strength based phrase approach um i know that uh, reading and writing is just not everybody's strength and so there i, I believe that there are just so many different forms of literacies that um, are undervalued and I mean, we live in such a visual culture right now. And so I really hope to bring in um, the, the TV side, the multimedia side, the digital storytelling side, and just play to students' strengths. Um, as you can see here, uh, Gabriel, uh, he's, he's helped me to figure out uh, a lot of uh, different tools. And you know, he's bringing his computer science background into the TV studio. He's, he's worked with me as, an in, uh, as, a, as a work study student, and he was really integral to the setup and development of, of this TV studio. I really couldn't have done it without him. He, he probably is too humble to admit that. <laughs> but um, so it's, it's it, it just also just making education joyful and fun. You know, it doesn't have, always have to be dry and academic um, and making it experiential. Um, I, I just find that students, their eyes light up when they come into a TV studio. Um, you know, as opposed to when you enter a lecture hall and you see them all, everybody half falling asleep and eyes glaz uh, glazing over. I think so. I think our degree really, really brings that to the table. Um, just multi, you know, playing to your strengths, whether you're a visual learner, or you're an auditory learner, um, we have something for you. That's great. Thank you, Jerry. Um, so another question, what is what is the curriculum like? So if a student has declares the degree, um, what's their what's their experience going to be like? What kind of classes are they going to take? I can sort of answer this. This is a Jeff question, but um, there are two strands, you know, one of which focuses on um, more on the um, sort of business side, the entrepreneurial leadership side, and the other, which focuses more on the storytelling multimedia side. Uh, within that, there's some core courses that everybody has to take, um, you know, some of which are just the general education requirements. And um, depending on which strand you're on, there there's a range of electives of courses that you need to fulfill. All the students take a course um, called Leadership and Facilitation, uh, which is a kind of uh, junior level course that's an introduction to leadership and also a communications course that connects um, writing and communications to leadership and being in groups. Then there's a leadership practicum, which is a place where you really work on leadership skills. And then students do an independent capstone, which is self-designed and essentially like an independent study. That Those three courses are really core uh, along with, you know, everybody takes communications 101 or 1011. I mean, it's you, know, you have basic communications and a lot of standard general education courses. Um, Jeff may have more details, and those are in the catalog as well. And I think Jeff may be able to speak to us. We're communicating behind the scenes, so let's try that. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, good. Well, I think Mac covered some of the key ideas for the uh, Kamo program. I just want to say one more thing. Uh, when students are going through the program, they can choose to focus into one of two areas. One area is about organizational and social change. 
So that's more on the management and um, of, of other kind of business areas, or the other focus is that of multimedia communication and storytelling. We've been featuring a lot of the uh, media parts in tonight's program, but there's uh, there's because of the, the degree bridges both communication and business. Uh, it's possible to uh, kind of go back and forth, and often students take courses from both areas, but they end up focusing on one area or the other. Thanks, Jeff. It's good to hear your voice, too. We were sorry that you couldn't join us right yeah, at the start. <laughs> I, I um, could jump in on some other topics or answer any questions. Yeah, did you want to, is, were, were there, was there anything you wanted to say that you didn't get to say because you weren't on at the beginning? Feel free to. Wow, uh, I'll mention Luke, Luke had talked about being an entrepreneur and our entrepreneurship program. I want to mention that this is really a grassroots kind of approach. There's a lot of experiential, um, experimental aspects of it, um, we actually have a maker space right across the hall from the TV st um, studio. And this is another space where their students can come and they're, they're, they can kind of ex explore different things and we have programs there so students could learn how to sew or they might want to um, uh, use electronics. Uh, we have 3D printers there. We have a laser cutter. Uh, this semester, we one of our students, one of our student entrepreneurs, wanted to start a a drone business, a business where he would put drones in the sky that would do photography, and video and things like that. So he actually made a pitch, and we gave him some seed money. He started doing that, but he actually. Be, before he even made his pitching, he was in the uh, in the in this makerspace, which we call the Idea Lab, and he was trying using the printer, three D printer, and the laser cutter. He was trying to make his own drones. It was it was quite clever and quite passionate of him, and he, of course, he, and he's, he was able to kind of ex go further with that, all of that. So that was one thing I wanted to mention. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so we have a question about uh, internships, and I know um, we talked a little bit about Luke um, doing an internship through the program, and Gabe uh, interned for me. But the um, question is, you know, what what kinds of opportunities are there for students who are in the Kamal degree? I could tell you that we have over forty internships. Uh, available for students in, in the degree at this point. We're still rolling out more. Uh, and they're both on-campus internships. So you might be, uh, for example, the social media director for our radio station, WLMC. And so that's an internship. Uh, but you could also be working, as Mac talked about, at the local newspaper with him. Uh, the, we also There are all kinds of other placements. And Luke, I believe you were uh, you were interning at the local newspaper, The Commons. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. What was uh, what was that like? What was your role? Well, I it was uh, it's very interesting because you know the the Commons and the I guess the parent company, Vermont Independent Media, are sort of in a transitional period uh, on the you know themselves. And so uh, when I came in, I, I came in as uh, you know operations doing operations management and that ultimately uh, I was kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, a lot of work that I ended up doing was um, I handled their database and public relations and um, nonprofit donor management, that sort of thing. Um, it was really, really amazing to, to work with those people and, and see just how much backing a little newspaper like that has in the community, um, just interacting you know, well, not quite face to face in the era of COVID, but you know, interacting with you know donors and, um, yeah, just very 
you know, experiential in nature. I was in their office once a week during the summer. It was a summer internship. Um, and I've since done work study there as well. So also just for, for networking purposes, you know, and, and to build a resume, it's just really special. You know, I, I worked at a nonprofit newspaper, you know, so great opportunity. And I believe you're still in some capacity. Are you involved with their board? Is that right? I'm on the board of directors now. So I, the, the snowball got cool. big enough and <laughs> I'm on the board of directors and, you know, I, I, I still work there every week and it's fun. You know, it's, it's great to be part of, and I'm doing, I've done operations. I also did some journalism with Mac over this past winter break. That was really a moving experience and, uh, seeing your name as a byline on newspapers is real special the first time it happens. So I was really feel real fortunate to have been part of that. So thank you, Mac. <laughs> All right, we have a, a kind of a general um, landmark college question that I'm hoping uh, Jeff or Mac could answer. Um, what kind of um, uh, individualized support is available for students at Landmark? <laughs> what do you want? To, you want to do that, Mac? You want, or you want me to talk? <laughs> I would just say a lot. <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> details of the current system, but it's really extensive. I mean, it really is. Jeff, you might be able to speak to that better than me. Uh, well, first, our classes are relatively small. It, there's no uh, students don't have the opportunity to um, get lost in the back of the room. They they have to be part of the whole the whole class. Uh, so first of all, the classroom environment itself uh, gives students a lot of attention. Uh, then our faculty have office hours and students are uh, str you know, strongly encouraged to take advantage of that. And then we have a support center. And this is, this is available uh, long hours through the day into the evening. Uh, you can set up appointments there. Uh, you can come in for different kinds of kind of general work if you want to work on a piece of writing or uh, get some proofreading help. Uh, or you can, there are um, more specific kinds of support for in, in the sciences or in business, actually, our economic, we have economic support now. Um, computer science, we have specific support and math, math support as well. So uh, it's really hard to get lost. And I might just add that, you know, the residential system, Landmark has an integrated sort of student affairs and residential program. And so, the you know, the residential system also supports students. There's a lot of interconnection for students that is, um, you know, kind of like a web of support that students take advantage of the way they, they want to or need to. But also just faculty help students. Like, you know, that's kind of like our job. I mean, I'm a professor. It's like you don't ever let a student you know, like, you know, fall through the cracks. It's like part of your job is to to stick with people, um, which I think, you know, Gabe and Luke could attest to. Yeah, that was gonna Plus be my- Every my student question. has an advisor that they uh, they work closely with. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask if Gabe or Luke would like to jump in and talk a little bit about some of the, the supports that they've been able to take advantage of. Um, I do uh, academic coaching. Um, I, I use I use most, uh, if not all, of the supports at one point, but definitely like DCAS um, uh, coursework support is just a you know a good stru uh, structured environment to go do homework. But um, I, I I take advantage of office hours. Um, there's a lot of support on on Landmark that I. I I definitely utilize. And if I could say something as well, I just, I, you know, I've never really, I never really used DCAS that much, but office hours are huge and every, every faculty member has them. And I would just like to say that, I mean, I've been to two other colleges before Landmark and the land, pretty much every, almost every faculty member I've had at Landmark is, has made been abundantly available. 
you know, I mean, if you, you hit them on email, they'll get right back to you usually the same day, if not within a few hours, you know, um, just, just super available. Um, the class sizes are small. You're able to, you know, get you know, individual attention if, if you're having trouble in the class and they pretty much all the faculty will bend over backwards to help, help, help you learn all the skills you need to pass their courses and, and whatnot. Great. And we do, since this is our kickoff event for our open house, if you join us tomorrow for our open house panels, you'll hear a lot more about that. I think there is even one panel perhaps on academic supports. Um, and I think um, Jerry may be joining us then as well for a, for a demo class. Um, so I urge everyone, if, you're, if you haven't already registered for um, open house, please go to our website and look for the open house tab, or you can email me directly, uh, marketing at landmark.edu, and I'll send you the, uh, the link for that. So um, we're almost at the end of our hour, and we have, uh, we've, I think we've answered all the questions, um, but I'd love to turn it over to you guys to, to see if anyone has anything they'd like to say in conclusion. I'll say something that I had hoped to say at this at the beginning, uh, and I don't. Maybe this has already been touched on, but I think we live in a in a historic period, and I'm not I'm not thinking about uh, the COVID pandemic. I'm really thinking about even that even more broadly, and what I mean is the world's become more interconnected. Uh, there's the rise of globalism. Uh, there's media ubiquity and the uh, kind of rapid increasing pace of technology. And so given our current times, this particular degree is, um, is a perfect match for giving students the kind of tools and the skills and the knowledge to be able to move into, um, into the present and into the future. So that's how it's been designed. It's a great summary, Jeff. Thank you for adding that. All right. Well, um, we have so we have a, a schedule of webcasts that we do on uh, Platform Q. We have a few more coming up this spring. Our next one, I believe, is April eighth, which is also a Thursday evening, and that will be all about careers and internships. Our Office of Career Connections. We'll be presenting with uh, some students who have have done internships, and we'll uh, we'll talk about those experiences. So please join us then. You'll see emails and other communications that go out uh, about that prior. And again, please join us for our virtual open house tomorrow, March nineteenth, beginning at one p.m. Eastern time. So uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. I especially want to thank everyone on our panel tonight who joined us, our students and our faculty. And uh, take care, everyone, and have a great night.